This is a 1941 Buick Super Coupe convertible. Buick's production was over 12,000 of these cars that was built and actually was considered a sports car back in the day and has great performance, great lines, and was high quality back in 1941. Absolutely a wonderful driving automobile. Now one of the things that's very special about this car is number one is the hood. It's a two-way hood. So it opens up this way to work on this side. And then you can also put it down and open it up on the other side to work on the other side of the engine, which is neat. This is a 248 overhead valve straight eight engine, which has incredible power, 125 horsepower with the two carburetors on it. It can really get up and go. And once again, back in the day, this is one of the most powerful cars that was being built by General Motors. Competed very handily with Cadillac, but you know what? This outsold Cadillac because of the horsepower and the carburation. So if you wanted to have a sports car cruise with the top down, this was a car to have. The car came in a multitude of, of colors. This personally is probably one of my favorite colors. It's called Sequoia Cream. It has a ruby red leather interior. Very simple but also very, very comfortable to drive in. Has every option available from the electric clock, which still works, the radio, which still works, vacuum operated windshield wipers and defroster and your standard gauges. Factory installed turn signals were right here. The first year for cars was 1940. So you could turn the signal, but also shift as this has three on the tree. This is your gear shift. They put the gear shift here so you could sit three people across the front. The trunk, as you can see, is very spacious, um, has an area to keep all the tools, has the original spare from 1941, which was pretty neat. One of the unique pieces is on the rims, they always had a three-line trim piece on all the wheels, which makes it very uh, attractive. This is interesting. Buick did a lot of things to gate to push safety in 1940 and 1941. In 1940, actually each one of these would light up. If you're turning to the right, that would flash. You're turning to the left, that would flash. In 1941, they changed it. So actually the lens down here has an arrow in it. So when a turn signal goes on, that actually flashes to the right. The same thing with this to the left. A very unusual option is the backup light. So when you put it in reverse, you have a light. That was an optional, um, piece for safety that Buick put together. Back in the day, having a convertible top sometimes was kind of difficult. You'd have to raise it and lower it yourself. In 1941, Buick came out with a vacuum operated convertible top. You pull a small button, it goes all the way down by itself. You push the button in and it goes up all by itself. Really made the car easy to enjoy with top down driving in the summer or early spring or fall. The suspension of the car has a standard A-frame suspension in the front, operates really nice. The brakes are four-wheel drum brakes, and then it has an enclosed drive shaft called a torque tube, and it keeps it very quiet, hardly any noise whatsoever, and it was something that Buick had for many, many years, just part of their engineering. But one of the reasons I really like this car is, number one, um, I had a 1940 Buick Phaeton convertible, which was a great, great car to drive but I wanted to get something a little bit sportier. So I found this 1941 Buick in Denver, Colorado, and I thought, what a great car to tour on. Either do the Glidden Tour, which are pre-war cars, 1942 and older, or maybe the Sentimental Tour, which are cars from 1928 to 1958. I found the car in Denver, did some history on it, and turned out it was owned by a gentleman who owned a Buick dealership in Ontario, Canada and had this on the showroom floor for many, many years. He took it off the showroom floor, had it spruced up, repainted in 1995, took it to a Concours Elegante show, then after that enjoyed it and drove it. Unfortunately, in 2019, he went into a nursing home and the family decided to sell it. And that's how I came across the car through an auction and the prior owner, Scott, had it. So I'm actually the third owner of the car and it is just going to turn probably at the end of the day 29,000 miles and I'm able to document the history all the way back to the owners with pictures of the car 
and the owners. Once again, the car drives like it is magnificent, and really the purpose of the car was a touring car, and it does tour beyond your imagination. Thank you.